Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today's presentation is about the round robin test. The round robin test is part of a playlist on experimental research and it's a follow up lecture on the le replication uh, lecture that was previously uh, broadcasted. Well, just to give you some context, this lecture is part of the experimental research methodology and here I'm talking about family of research that many of you are interested to work on. The content of today's presentation is mainly to introduce the round robin test and to give a very short description of this test within the ASTM's E100-691 uh, characteristic description and just a short presentation or short discussion on the parametric runs and sensitivity analysis that can be done within this round robin test and finally some takeaway message. But before to start, I have to give you some introduction about the context of the round robin test. Before starting, we need to know what's the difference between reproducibility and replicability. So first of all, reproducibility is the successful reproduction of the original data by independent reanalysis using the same analytical approach. And here this is very different and distinguished from the replicability, which is successfully finding the same or similar results in a new sample. So many people get confused between those terms. It's important to take this into consideration. If I'm repeating the same test, but in a different lab uh, or in a different uh, setting, then I'm doing a reproducibility work. But if I'm using a new sample, then I'm doing a replicability work. And this example can give you some idea here where we can see that a good reproduction is about finding a middle ground between replication and irrelevance. And here you can see in this graph developed by Zach Scott, that the research question in the replication and the reproduction are different. The same with the data that is uh, used, the models that are used, the hardware or the instruments and the user. So it's important to keep this difference between replicability and reproducibility. Now let's go into the round robin test. What is actually the round robin test? Actually, it's an experimental methodology to determine reproducibility of a process. So mainly you have a test, you have a protocol, you have a method and you want to reproduce it where these tests are performed independently multiple times and the results are analyzed statistically to assess their variability. It's important to keep this in account because today we have variation of uh, research uh, outcomes and we need to validate that on a global scale and it's important to benefit from the uh, round robin test in this sense. So for example, I can have a sample which is analyzed and its properties is measured. Let's say it's a material sample or a blood tissue sample and uh, its properties is measured by the same or different laboratories using the same or different methods and based on an ANOVA test or an analysis of variance, I can start to check how far are the variances in the results regarding the same test or the regarding the same sample that is used. Once the results are within a certain range and they are similar, then I can say that my uh, results passed the round robin test and this gives a higher credibility of my work and it allows to have an external validation in this sense. Now let's go into detail to understand exactly what is this round robin test. Well, what is a round robin test? It is simply a test program in which a number of laboratories test identical samples of a number of test subjects in order to determine the precision of each reported parameter in a test method. And a round robin program is an analysis technique which uses mainly ANOVA or the analysis of variance, which has a random uh, to investigate the random effects model to assess a measurement system. So it's important to keep this into account. Now, why should I control my uh, uh, measurement and why should I do this round robin test? Because I need to determine the reproducibility of my test method or process. So it's a way to validate my technique that I'm using on my protocol. It allows me uh, to have a verification step. So the verification of a new method of analysis or a new equipment involving proven methods for results comparison, especially when you are initiating a new lab or if you are using a new proce procedure or protocol, or you are even inventing a new procedure or, or protocol in a certain moment, if you want to make it uh, consistent, you need to test it. And the round robin is a very good uh, uh, chance to or method to do that. And for sure, it is used for certification and benchmarking. So inter-laboratory testing can provide basis for certificates of quantitative analysis on a given subject. And this makes the consistency between labs higher and validates your work approach and makes sure that your results are consistent. And here is an example of the ASTM E100 
691, which is a standard practice for, con uh, for conducting an interlaboratory study to determine the precision of a test method. I invite you to download uh, or purchase this standard and uh, cross go through it to make sure that you are familiar. And in this uh, short summary here, I'm going through the main elements of the ASTM E100-691, and I'm describing it under four major steps. Let's go with step number one. Well, step number one is planning the interlaboratory study that you are going to conduct. So the question will be here, how to plan it? How to plan my planning? Or how to start my planning? First of all, you need to use a valid, well-written test method that has been developed in one or more competent laboratories. And this is important to take into account. Before you start to scale up your whole experiment, it is usually wise to conduct a pilot run uh, with only one subject or two subjects uh, to determine the protocol is clear, the lab members are familiar with the procedure, and your equipment are well calibrated, and you are making sure that your measuring uh, method and approach is standardized and is uh, complying in all different labs. So this is the first step to look at while you are planning. Moving to the se second step with the ASTM here is the guiding the testing phase. And here you can ask yourself how to start technically. First of all, before starting, an interlaboratory study should ideally include 30 labs or more. 30 labs more or more means that you will have an international uh, uh, approach that you will uh, avoid bias and you will not be uh, focused only on national labs or regional labs, but you can go beyond the continents, your continent and have an involvement of a larger involvement. And in general, an acceptable test result cannot be fewer than six laboratories. So in a, um, a round-robin test, you can have not never less than six uh, laboratory participating. And when you have six, seven, eight, it's still acceptable, but it, the results are considered as initial. Uh, so I don't want to discourage you. 30 is sometimes difficult to reach, but just number you need to keep it into account, especially if you are doing something on a global level and you want to make sure that there is a high quality and consistency of your test and acceptability also. Second thing to take into account while guiding your testing approach is to have qualified laboratories, which implies proper facilities and testing equipment, operators, familiarity, familiarity with the test method and a reputation for reliable testing work. And in this sense, it might cost you that you will travel uh, or uh, provide training to other laboratories, especially if you are developing a new technique, and this requires for sure uh, an investment. But without a qualified laboratory, it would be very difficult to do round-robin uh, tests, and technically, round-robin tests are, are done between labs that have very good reputation, are well-funded, and they have minimum uh, infrastructure that allow them to have a high-quality work. And the last aspect that is here key, crucial, which is random randomization. For each material, independently allocate and say if we say a material it can be a subject whatever it is your subject or your sample but for each sam uh, sample or subject in, uh, independently allocate the specified number of test units or test specimens to each laboratory using random numbers so this is very important that you create a little pool of a testing sample and you make sure that it is randomized so that you make sure that you are avoiding bias and you are avoiding any subjectivity while doing the test. So this is the second step with the ASTM recommendation. Moving to the third step before the fourth and the final one, how to analyze the results or how to do my data processing. First of all, you first thing you have to do you after you are done with your test, you do you need to do data inspection. The completed dat data sheets uh, should be examined by the coordinator immediately upon the receive received in order to detect unusual values or other deficiencies that should be questioned. So you need to have a very critical approach, make sure that what are the acceptable ranges to make sure that there is no errors during implementation or mistakes that were done during the testing method. Also, you need to have a sufficient total number of test results on each subject. Uh, uh, they need to be specified to obtain a good estimate of the measure of repe repeatability. Generally, the repeatability standard deviation should be calculated. You will calculate the mean values and the standard deviation, and based on that, you can start to uh, compare the results. And finally, you need to calculate the sample uh, average and general uh, for each laboratory and calculate the standard deviation for the test results among all labs in order to report back. And always reporting is done in a tabular way 
uh, or in tabular form to make sure that you can compare uh, all labs and people can see the differences and then you can uh, assess uh, the uh, confidence interval or the variation of the ranges between the different labs. And this moving to the last step after you are done with analysis, the reporting. Reporting is very important for the round robin test and your reports will need to be accessible at least for the uh, groups you are working with. And in this sense, you need to have uh, uh, in the protocol, you have to cite the name, address, and telephone number of the person who has been uh, designated uh, for the integra in the interoperability or interlaboratory study uh, and the coordinator names. You have to clearly identify the specific version of the test method being studied and the protocol and citing this uh, protocol or this procedure. You have to uh, mention the special calibration proce procedures that were uh, followed and you uh, describe any uh, special circumstances that must be uh, uh, addressed in implementing the repeatability conditions, including the temperature, uh, the quantities, uh, the type of testing, uh, the date, the time, and so on and so on. So this is very important to take into account. By that, I gave you a little information about uh, the ASTM protocol on how to do round-robin tests, maybe in your country or in your continent you find a different standard rather than the ASTM. The ASTM is an American standard, maybe you find another a European or an or a Asian uh, standard, but make sure always that you refer to a respectable protocol or a standard that defines how to do round robin tests in your field uh, of industry or in your field of research. Now once this done you can start to go the extra mile. What is the extra mile after doing the round robin test is to do sensitivity analysis or check the sensitivity analysis. And here you can, uh, uh, a series of parametric analysis can be carried uh, out to investigate the sensitivity of the analysis results in relation to the study variables. And this is very important because it brings a lot of insights and better understanding of the uh, performance of your uh, subjects. And in this context, you can um, um, increase the added value of your outcome of your research and better enlighten all participants in your laboratory testing. Well, this brings me to the end of the presentation of today. Some takeaway messages very fast. Well, uh, the round robin test is an experimental methodology to determine reproducibility of a process uh, where tests are performed independently multiple times and the results are analyzed statistically to assess their va uh, variability. The round robin test aims to evaluate the effectiveness of laboratory tests and procedures. An interlaboratory study should ideally include 30 labs or more, use strong statistical tests, including the ANOVA, the standard deviation, uh, and make sure that you are characterizing, describing your samples. Uh, show data from calibration and validation tests using standard materials, and make sure that you have um, a great transparency in this area to make sure that others can uh, produce the same uh, results. Share the input files and the version information, whether you use a certain software uh, or a certain program or an Excel sheet to uh, analyze the results. Don't hesitate to share it uh, with the participant. And for sure, report the observational details of the material synthesis or your subject synthesis and the treatments that were done. Well, by that, I end up today's presentation on the round robin test. I hope it was useful. Don't hesitate to check the uh, following video and previous video in the same series on experimental research. Also, I invite you to comment, compliment what I'm saying. If you have questions, if you find it useful, share it. And if you want also to check the facts that I'm sharing with you, don't hesitate to correct me if you find anything necessary to be corrected. By that, I thank you very much for your attention. Today's presentation was about the round robin test. Thank you very much.